My favorite disruptive change has been in, in mobile computing. I, I guess probably the nerd in me is a little thrilled at this concept that, you know, we went from being all really strung to these personal computers, which by the way, IBM said would never exist. You know, IBM said, we will all gather around this giant machine and, and, and worship at it. And then people said, no, we want computers in our house. And we went that way. And then we said, oh, we need to reconnect them because we're alone in our houses. And so we did, we were like, okay. And so we made this, you know, giant, you know, fake internet first, like AOL and things like that. And then we made a real internet. And then, you know, for a very long time, it's been like, you know, who can make the thinnest laptop? You know, the, my laptop is the size of a folded piece of paper and, and whatever. Now, where we are with disruptive change is, you know, first smartphones. You know, before uh, iPhone came out, the only conversation you'd have with someone about their phone is what's the coverage like and how many minutes do you get in your plan? That was the least interesting conversation in the universe. Now, it's, you know, what apps do you have? What apps don't you have? What's cool that you can do with your phone that I can't do with mine? And I think that what came next, though, is what's really disruptive, Bill, which is the whole tablet market. And I think that, you know, all you need to do is go to any airport, at least in the U.S., and you see all the gray hairs, all with tablets. And I'm just like, we have just entirely changed the scope of the universe because, you know, my grandparents could have cared less about computers. My parents are very digitally savvy. But, you know, there's a big chunk of the baby boomer set who are now going, hey, I can play because they don't have to do, you know, the, the I'm 50 something years old trombone effect with their phone anymore. They actually can just lie on their tablet and make it bigger. So I think the most disruptive thing is mobile. It's outselling laptops. So guys like Dell are like, ah, but luckily they've got a great tablet in their nifty little XPS 10. So I think that there's a lot of cool stuff coming. What might surprise people is that the disruptive change that I'm struggling with is the whole social media space. I am flabbergasted by the hopes and dreams that businesses put on this platform and by their absolute inability to con you know, just conceive what the communications medium desired and needed. And I think that there's a lot of crazy crashing and burning going on out there. There's a lot of this is what social media is or isn't out there. There's a lot of people just kind of, you know, worshiping the tools and not understanding their place in the business stream. And so, I, I mean, I've gone after that space to try to say to companies big and small and solo people, holy cow, you know, let's just shed all this crazy and get back to this is a channel. This is how we do business in it. This is how we do customer service in it. This is how we do sales. And I think that I, every day that someone comes to me and asks me, is Snapchat all that in a bag of chips, is a day that I just try to stab myself a little under the table. So I think that there's one of the problems with disruption, I'll, I'll give you another piece of this too. I, I just sent out an email to a bunch of people saying, hey, Gmail made some changes you might not know about. And if you're not getting my newsletter anymore, here's why. And this person wrote back and says, I'm 59 years old and I like Gmail, but I just wish they'd leave it alone. I just figured it out and they just broke it again. And I'll, I'll, I'll tell you that I think that a lot of the tech industry and a lot of this you know, new fangly industry loves new for new sake and is totally losing people who just want the buttons to stay where they are, you know? And I think that that's a horrendous disruption that we can tackle in our lifetime. When people ask me, how do you keep up? First off, I say, don't keep up. There's no race. You don't have to be behind somebody else and saying, oh, they're doing this thing because that's how lemmings go off cliffs. I'm following this other guy. And then you just all go off the cliff together. I think that with disruption, one of the most important things is to realize that no ground is solid. Nothing is solid. There is no way that the movie industry thought that Blockbuster was gonna go away. And they had this plan and the movie would come out now and then five months later the Blockbuster would come out and Netflix came and crushed it. And then Netflix said, we own everything, don't worry, we've got this. And then Redbox came along and said, oh, but you can have your, you can have your movie right now. And, Red, and Netflix was like, ah, uh, streaming, we'll do streaming. And so they were like, okay, we got it again. We own everything. And then Amazon said, we'll do streaming and we have more customers than you. <laughs> and so it's like this, until the end of time. At some point, we're going to be able to go to the movie theater and the movie will beam into our Google Glass phone and we can watch it again on the drive home. Uh, pedestrians be damned. So, I mean, we just have to really hold on to the fact that there will be no solid ground. Here's what you do instead. You keep thinking only of this. What do I need out of this jumble? What do I really need? I need to... You know, I need to be in contact with more buyers. Okay, that's the only thing I'll be thinking. So whenever I see something new come, I'll say, is this gonna help me be in contact with more buyers? Don't ask, why are all the kids using it? Or why are all the grownups using it? Just say, does this meet the new needs I have? 
And if you don't have needs, um, then just go sit in a box and just wait. And then we'll put dirt on the box at some point. But that's not how life works. Life works by only change. And, you know, once we start getting set in our ways is once, you know, everything starts to really uh, calcify and start to decay. So we have to move with it. We have to look for the new thing. But look from our compass, not from the world is changing compass. As a dad, my children are a little unique and they were raised quite digitally. My kids' fetuses were on the internet before they were. Um, they've been taking selfies from inside the womb. So it's a little different for me. But I would say that one of the things I try to explain with my kids with regards to disruption is that they are likely going to beat all of the things that came before them. I mean, for instance, my kids could care less about Spotify versus Rhapsody versus iTunes. My kids go to YouTube for video and that's not normal in my mind, but that's what kids do. Kids have no concept that they should bother getting a subscription to Spotify. Why should I? I can get it on YouTube. My kids uh, believe everything should be hackable, that there's not a single trademark that shouldn't be allowed to be messed with by users. You know, for instance, my little boy wants to create fake levels for Super Mario Brothers games, and so he does, you know. And so I think that there's just so much disruption coming with that generation because, I, you know, you can see it in Generation Y. Generation, generation Y says, I need to be at the CEO table the first week I'm in the company, and I, I need to be making decisions to impact this business. Well, the two generations after that, my little bugs, they're going to, why even join that company? I'm just going to make my own because it's easier, I guess. And so I guess the only kind of guidance I give them is the same I give people who don't want change, which is just keep going from your own inner compass. Find the direction you want to go in and go that way because the worst thing in the universe is to have a GPS with no coordinates in it. This is I wandered into a group of MBA students to help uh, teach one day of their class. And at the end, I said something to the tune of, you know, who here is planning to do something entrepreneurial or run their own company? And zero hands went up. Zero. And I, I, I had this horrible disconnect. And all I thought was, I'm so glad this is near the end because I feel like throwing down the microphone and running out of the room. Um, but, I, you know, I was like, ah, I'm not amongst my people. I feel that what's going on in the universe is that We've done a great job over the last 60 years of breeding sheep uh, who do very well in pens. And there's a lot of people, I, it's amazing I can get people to say to my face, I prefer to be a kept person. I prefer to just go to work when they tell me to, when they tell me to. I prefer to do what they tell me to do. I get the paycheck that they give me. And then I leave when I, you know, the day is done. And then I can complain with my friends all day about how bad that was. And then I just work on the things that I really love. And I'm blown away. I mean, I, I, can get, I can get a room full of people to say this, Bill. Uh, to me, the difference is that it's going away. There is no solid ground. I live in a factory building. What is around me while we're speaking right now is the other revolution. So before there was Detroit, where I live right now is a building that used to uh, do, it was the carriage industry of uh, horse-drawn carriages. And this was the place. Like if you wanted a carriage in the U.S., it came, parts of it came from here, if not the whole thing. And I'm living in the factory building because there's no need for this factory anymore. Cubicles, if you listen to what James Altucher is saying in his book, Choose Yourself and whatnot, everything downtown in New York City, you can walk by skyscrapers where there's maybe two floors full and all the other floors are empty. So they're this waiting to happen again. Why? Because we don't need that either anymore. We don't need the systems we've had for the last 60 plus years. So disruption is saying we are going to scatter like uh, atoms all over the place and we need to figure out new connections and make new molecules back out of this thing that'll then make compounds and that'll then make something solid again. But it is not going to be your father's Oldsmobile. It is not going to be, you know, show up at nine, leave at five, have a nice day. And in your head, you're, you know, some people are thinking, oh, he means eight to five thirty. You know, we're no, no, I, I mean, there's no job there. There's no paycheck. There is no little nugget for you, little hamster. You have to go and find a new wheel to run on. I don't even need that. If you're happy with it, then I'm happy with okay. it. There's, you know, there's nothing I did that you can, you know, make me feel sad about. Okay.